to meet you. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rosie, and I am here with the European Union Ambassador to Cambodia, Mr. Igor Driesmans. It's such an honor to uh, have this opportunity to interview Mr. Ambassador to get to know more about him, as um, he just took the office a few months ago, which is a great time for us to learn more about his mission, his vision, as well as his commitment to the Kingdom of Cambodia. Uh, before coming to Cambodia, uh, he was the uh, EU ambassador to ASEAN, based in Indonesia, and he has also served as uh, the EU special envoy for Myanmar since 2022. So, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for sparing us your time to fit this interview into your busy schedule. Thank my pleasure, my pleasure, Rosie. So, uh, my first question to you would be, what was your first impression of Cambodia when you knew that uh, uh, you were assigned as an ambassador to the country and your first arrival to the kingdom? I was very happy uh, because Cambodia is the country I wanted to uh, come to. I wanted to be assigned to uh, because I had the opportunity last year when I was the uh, ambassador to uh, ASEAN to come here several times uh, and uh, from the get-go I was impressed with the kindness of the people, the hospitality uh, of the people, how humble uh, they are. Uh, so definitely for me it was very, uh, very good news. Of course since then I've started to study more uh, trying to get uh, uh, beyond the superficial exchanges, learn about the history, mm -hmm. all the way from the Angkor Empire, uh, but also the, say, the more uh, uh, recent history, and of course also sometimes very difficult history. But you know, it speaks to the resilience of the people of Cambodia to have uh, overcome uh, all of that. So you start learning about the country, about the histories, when you knew that you would come to this country? Of course, I've, I've uh, uh, looked up several things before <laughs> that, but yes, uh, of course. I also committed to learn a bit of Khmer, but don't test me on this uh, quite yet. <laughs> but you have a, a plan, right, to learn uh, the language? I, I do, but you will grant me that it's not an easy language uh, to learn. There are some colleagues who uh, I admire a lot because they uh, uh, they have learned and are uh, up to a sufficient level so they can actually uh, speak it relatively fluently. So let's do this interview in four years' time and then you'll ask me the same questions. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, speaking about the EU and Cambodia friendship, so, so far, uh, what, what are your thoughts? What do you think about our relationship? And uh, what would you do as an ambassador to Cambodia in order to enhance the friendship between Cambodia and the European Union? Of course, we, we already have a very dense uh, partnership spanning over uh, uh, many fields, but if you're asking about my priorities, let me just name three. Okay. Uh, uh, firstly, I think uh, we're, we can be very good partners in the green transition. It's something that has gone to the top of the agenda in the European Union. Uh, we all know that uh, climate change is a an existential threat uh, for Europe, for Southeast Asia, for the world. We live it every day. Uh, in my own uh, home country, Belgium, we see floods that I haven't seen uh, in my lifetime. Uh, and we've seen droughts that I haven't seen in my uh, lifetime. So climate change is not a future prospect, it's there. So uh, we in the EU have uh, tried to uh, come up with a plan, it's called the European Green Deal, to combat climate change. And we've diminished our CO2 emissions below 7% of the world total of CO2 emissions. But of course, um, that's only a small part of the global emissions. So we want to partner with as many countries uh, as possible. And I think Cambodia would be a natural partner for us because the impact uh, of climate change uh, on Cambodia is already being felt uh, and I think with the uh, big economic growth that Cambodia has known over the past um, uh, few uh, years, um, there's also an important incentive for a green transition, for example, when it comes to uh, renewable energy. So that would be number one. Yeah. Uh, shortly, briefly, uh, number, number two for me is the trade and uh, investment between the European Union and uh, Cambodia. For now, the European Union is Cambodia's um, 
second destination for export uh, uh, products. Uh, we want to uh, work together to uh, prepare Cambodia for graduating from a, a, a low development country to a, a middle income country or a least development country, sorry. Um, and uh, uh, lastly, uh, we want to work on education and invest in the youth of uh, Cambodia because I see that 65% uh, of the population of Cambodia is under 30 uh, years old, uh, which is almost the total opposite of what's uh, the demographics in, in Europe. But uh, we see their vast potential both for the Cambodian economy, Cambodian society, but also for us to partner with. Okay, so the three priorities that you will be working on as an ambassador here. There might be many more, but this there is my first gist. <laughs> okay, okay, so then can you um, elaborate more of the priorities, like beyond these three priorities that you want to work on, perhaps the sector that you think that are you going to put an importance on during your mandate here? Sure, I mean, if I, um, we spoke about the economy, mm -hmm and uh, the transition of uh, uh, Cambodia to a middle-income country, which is of course good news because it shows Cambodia has experienced very substantial growth over the past uh, a few years to actually get to that level of middle-income country. Uh, but of course, uh, with that, countries outside of Cambodia will treat you differently. and. Uh, uh, with its current least developed uh, country status come a lot of advantages when it comes to trade preferences. So uh, when Cambodia graduates, uh, some of these trade uh, preferences might automatically uh, cease to exist. Uh, and if, as the projections currently go, uh, you will in effect become a, a least uh, middle-income country in 2027, we enter a a transitional period of uh, three years where everything but arms, the current trade regime is still in force. But then as of 2030, uh, we will be treated differently under a different trade regime. So that means two things. One is uh, we will uh, reduce the, uh, uh, the, or rather increase the tariffs on uh, products of Cambodia coming in. And secondly, the rules of origin might change. Now, what, me, what does that mean, rules of origin? It sounds very technical, but it means that uh, what we will require is products that are produced here in Cambodia should undergo what we call a double transformation. That means you cannot import products into Cambodia and then just export them to the European Union as Cambodian products. You need to actually process them here. So that's one of the things that we'll be working on with uh, the Cambodian um, uh, government, with the uh, private sector, to move, as we say, Cambodia up the value chain. I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, cashew nuts. Yeah. You, um, uh, uh, there's a quite substantial uh, production of uh, cashew nuts in uh, Cambodia. But once they're produced, uh, they go outside of the country to be processed before they are being uh, exports, exported to the European market or to other markets in the world. So we want to assist the cashew nut producers in partnership with the government to ensure that the process is, is done here so that before they're exported, they're actually a complete uh, product. Uh, and I also hear they taste very well, but I, I'll... I'll I'll confirm that once I've tried. <laughs> All right, so the rules of origin, so that means that Cambodia needs to use its own raw materials as, as well, right? Absolutely. It goes, bo it goes both ways. So if you are to produce uh, raw materia materials, you need to make sure that you process them here before you export. It also means that if you import products before you export them back to the European Union, you need to process them. So it's all about adding value to the processing in what we call the value chain in Cambodia. All right, Mr. Ambassador, so uh, talking about the tariff preferences and also the EBA, the everything but arm, it is the most discussed topic here in Cambodia, I would say. 
So um, is it likely that Cambodia like will lose it completely once it's graduate from the least developed uh, countries uh, status? And and I just want to know uh, what uh, could be the impact. I think more or less it will has an, an, an impact on uh, the Cambodian e economy. So uh, what will be the impact that Cambodia might face accordingly? Sure. Um, so uh, automatically once you become a middle-income country, the trade regime change. Mm. And for us, and it's different for the United States, different for Canada, for other uh, partners in the world, but for us, uh, you automatically uh, are under what we call the generalized system of preferences, GSP. So uh, GSP has much less trade preferences than the current everything but arms uh, uh, trade regime so that the tariffs will uh, increase there uh, I should add to this that Cambodia can ask to become an upgraded partner under what we call GSP plus and um, uh, then we get into a system that is somewhere in between GSP and everything but arms and once we would get that request we would need to discuss with the Cambodian government of course, there's a number of uh, conventions that the Cambodian government will need to uh, comply uh, with, but it's a s somehow a, a better or upgraded system as compared to uh, GSP. So um, there's still some years to go, but it's a very important uh, discussion and we're keen to have this already now. That's why uh, we work with, with, with the government, with other partners to make sure that um, the industry is ready, that the private sector is ready, that the government understands all the implications uh, and that we help Cambodia and its industry to move along the value chain. Oh, uh, so that means uh, before the EBA is withdrawn completely from Cambodia, the EU is now helping Cambodia, uh, for example, uh, you say to add the uh, like to add the value exactly. to the process product exactly. and exactly. also help it to um, help it during the tran transitional uh, Exactly, exactly, which is of course important uh, for us knowing what I just told you in terms of uh, our rules of origin but of course it's very good for the Cambodian economy in general because uh, you want to uh, uh, improve your economy further, you want to ensure that the sufficient processing is done uh, uh, in uh, Cambodia and you want to make sure that uh, eventually you don't get stuck in what they call the middle income trap which is that you get there but then it's difficult to transform the uh, economy and to grow further mm. so this is what we we want to partner with um, with the private sector with the industry and with the government on. Yeah, so um, do you think it is good for Cambodia to graduate from the least developed country status? Well, I mean, of course, it's, it's big news. It means that your economy has been growing and growing five, six, seven uh, percent over the last uh, couple of years. It, become, it means that you become richer. Yeah. And I think you can, anybody who's been in Phnom Penh 10 years ago and now, they can, they can uh, see the comparison, they can feel uh, the economic uh, uh, vibe. But I think it's normal that partners treat a poor country differently than they treat a middle-income country. Mm -hmm. uh, hence the different kind of trade regimes that not just us but many uh, around the world have with least developed countries as compared to others. Right. Thank you Mr. Ambassador. So trade aside, now let's talk about um, uh, your work, uh, the EU work with the new government of the moment because uh, your ambassadorship assignment, I think, is uh, coincided with the new government formation in Cambodia, right? Like three or four months ago that uh, you were assigned as an ambassador. So uh, I just want you to share your quick thought on the new government of Cambodia and uh, whether you have learned or known anything about the new government here. Sure. Well, I, I think I was lucky uh, because uh, I uh, came uh, and uh, took up my job maybe some 10 days after the new uh, government uh, got, into, uh, got into office. Um, I've presented my uh, credentials to His Majesty the King now more or less one month ago. So uh, I now look forward to meet all the different ministers and 
maybe I'll be able to give a more educated answer once I have uh, met them, but for sure, uh, uh, I think there's different priorities that the government has, uh, which coincide with the priorities that I've just uh, set out. Um, I had the pleasure to uh, speak to the Minister of uh, Environment about uh, 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 combating uh, plastic pollution, for example, a big priority of uh, his, uh, reforestation, another big uh, priority of his. Um, I had the uh, pleasure to uh, listen to the uh, Prime Minister and, and hear him speak about how he wants to attract uh, European uh, uh, investment and I think some of our businesses were also able to explain what they would see as the necessary reforms in the country uh, to attract more of that uh, European uh, investment. So uh, definitely there's a lot of, a lot of fields where our uh, interests uh, converge. And uh, 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 again, let me uh, come back to you in two months time and then I'll be able to comment on the different files more concretely. Okay, so then what is your expectation, you know, in working closely with the new government? And well, I, 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 I think we, uh, <laughs> we, can, we can find those uh, uh, common uh, interests. I mentioned a few, I'll name just one more, is uh, renewable energy. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to make that transition to a, um, uh, to a sustainable economy, to a circular economy, clean renewable energy will be one uh, priority. Uh, and uh, we heard the Prime Minister say that he had taken the commitment to build uh, uh, no more coal power plants, but to shift to renewable energy. Uh, and that is of course hydropower, it's solar power, it's wind uh, uh, energy. And I, I dare say that a lot of the European companies have a certain expertise in those uh, domains. As, so that's just one area where we can work together and we will uh, accompany that with uh, dialogue and support to the government, for example, when it comes to establishing uh, its energy grid, which is which gets very technical, but which is very important uh, when you want to, for example, build solar panels all over uh, Phnom Penh, you need to be able to connect them to, uh, to the grid. So yeah, there's a lot of work uh, cut out for us. Yeah, it, it will be a lot of work and perhaps uh, uh, the EU and Cambodia can work well on the, uh, for the common interest. Sure, okay. absolutely. So, um, as you know, uh, Cambodia has got a big change this year, and right now, the, most of the new members of the government, most of them uh, receive education abroad. So they are young, they are uh, driven, they are enthusiastic in um, improve the country. So. Do you think that the future democracy here in Cambodia or human rights would improve uh, given the fact that most of them uh, get education abroad? Um, well, I think <laughs> democracy, yeah. uh, human rights, uh, good governance, rule of law, th these are essential components of our external action. This is the case across the world. Uh, this is. Uh, what we think are not just our values, but our interests. Hence, um, it's something that we discuss with uh, any uh, third country. And Cambodia is no exception uh, to that. It's part of our uh, DNA. And uh, there's a number of uh, programs, projects that we will uh, continue. Uh, I think uh, one where we partner with the government is on public financial management, how to ensure there's sufficient uh, transparency in the accounting, uh, procurement, um, but also our work with uh, civil society, which uh, we will continue because we think a vibrant civil society is good for uh, for any country. Okay, so um, Mr. Ambassador, I think uh, uh, EU has been working a lot with Cambodia. So uh, for this question, I just want you to highlight uh, some of the outstanding projects that the European Union has been doing here in Cambodia has helped with uh, uh, the, the country, you know, the projects that the EU uh, is proud of. Okay, uh, so 
I will need to give flowers to my uh, predecessors. <laughs> but I think uh, uh, maybe one that is not so much known is that when COVID hit, and of course it hit around the world, that we stood by the people of Cambodia and were able to increase social assistance to uh, the people so that at the end of each month they're still able to pay their bills, pay electricity, pay food. So, of course, we did that in partnership with the government, uh, but I think it's sometimes important to acknowledge that uh, uh, we were there when the Cambodian people needed us uh, most. Something more recent and which also started way before uh, my time is the uh, water plant in Bakeng, uh, which will uh, provide drinking water for uh, uh, 700,000 people, mostly in uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, it's not finished. Uh, we're uh, currently entering phase two. We'll go quickly to phase three of the of the water plant. Uh, we do that in, in partnership with our with our French uh, uh, friends. But it's, uh, I think, a very tangible other project. Um, I could go on like that. Uh, like, so let me give you just one more. One project which will start uh, today is uh, technical, education technical education for uh, 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 young professionals uh, uh, to enter the, uh, the professional world, uh, to work in, for example, the garment industry, in energy, uh, uh, just to learn them some skills which they will need to enter the job market because we spoke about 65% uh, uh, of the Cambodians being under 30. Of course, it's good if they run through their primary education, secondary education, but then we need to prepare them for the job market and they need to have the necessary skill set to, uh, uh, to do so. So that's, that's just one other uh, project and uh, uh, program. Uh, but again, something that I hope will make a tangible impact in the lives of many Cambodians. Oh, so uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, you said you just launched the project, uh, the uh, technical education for the uh, young professionals. So um, is this project uh, provided to um, students in the universities or uh, who uh, can benefit from this? So uh, basically, uh, uh, not necessarily for university uh, students, but I think anybody can enroll who just has run through its uh, secondary uh, education. So we'll do it in partnership with the private uh, sector uh, and uh, adapting to the needs of uh, the private, private sector. So it's really that step that you need to take before you can actually get uh, a job. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's enough to talk about uh, your work in here. So now okay. it's time to get to know more about it. Okay, you. okay. As you've been uh, in Cambodia for three months, uh, is that correct? Correct. Right? Yeah, so three months. So during this three months, what, ac what activities or places have you been to? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, I, I hate to say it, but I haven't seen much. Uh, I went to CM Rep, but I only went to a conference and came back uh, the, same, uh, uh, the same day. So I've been able to walk around Phnom Penh, to cycle around uh, Phnom Penh, uh, but it is, it's my hope that I can visit all of the provinces in Cambodia at some point. I'd like to say in 2024, but at somebody, somebody might find out in December 24 that I haven't made uh, all of them. But definitely I want to go out there and um, and meet the people, uh, as important as uh, the relations with um, uh, government and all the uh, people here in Phnom Penh are, uh, I want to be able to uh, go out there, visit some of the uh, projects that uh, we have uh, underway, meet the local uh, authorities and get to learn more about the history, the culture of uh, Cambodia around, uh, around the country. Right, so, um, are there any places you have in mind, like in your bucket list, you know, <laughs> to go to during your mandate here? Oh, I, I, <laughs> bucket list is too long. Uh, I, I, uh, but um, 
I saw an invitation to go to Cap province in yeah. two weeks' time because the water festival will, I think, also go there. Uh, anyway, there will be festivities, uh, so I will uh, hook that up with a, a visit to, um, uh, to Cap. But uh, there will be many more, I hope. So uh, talking about water festival, you just mentioned, and also the festival is right around the corner. Yes. You think uh, in it's it's us uh, in next week uh, we will celebrate water festival here in Phnom Penh. So I just want to know, uh, do do you know anything about water festival? <laughs> and I am sure that it will be your first time attending water festival here, right? First time, first yeah. time, and it was one of the first things that my predecessor told me. <laughs> I regret that she had that during COVID there had been so little. Uh, 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 actually, I think only one or two during her time, yeah. uh, because it didn't happen for for several years, three years. Three years. Yeah. Um, so um, I saw an invitation that um, uh, also His uh, Majesty the King will be uh, there and uh, be part of the uh, festivities. Um, I understand it's about colorful boats racing against each other uh, and I see all of the preparations around uh, around the city uh, that will attract many from the from the provinces um, now as to the deeper cultural meaning I will need to I will need to do some some homework before <laughs> I before I go but maybe you can tell me <laughs> sure <laughs> okay so Mr. Ambassador uh, before I wrap up this interview uh, one last question to you. Uh, what would you want the Cambodian people to see you as an EU am ambassador to the country? Well, uh, I think very, very simply, some, somebody that uh, has the best intentions with the country and that wants to just improve their uh, relationship with uh, the European uh, Union, as simple as that. Okay, someone who is really committed to um, enhance the cooperation between Cambodia and the European Union. Correct. So thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for your time and uh, your insights, as well as tell us all of your work and your plans uh, as an ambassador here in Cambodia. And we are looking forward to more fruitful cooperation between Cambodia and the, Euro the European Union. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you.